Hey everyone, welcome back to another car review, this time on the Chevy Camaro Z28. Now, if you know anything about cars, you've of course heard of the Camaro. This car has an impressive and long history in the American car scene, dating back to the 1960s as a direct competitor of the Ford Mustang. The two cars have gone head to head for over 50 years now, and we're now on the sixth generation of Camaro. However, those six generations have passed me by as I generally avoid American muscle cars in the Forza series, but there's no better time than the present, and I figure there's no better car to do it in than a brand new Chevy Camaro. So let's take it out for its first test drive. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna stop talking for a second as we listen to the engine. So for me, the engine sounds not bad. It's definitely nothing special, but I wouldn't say it's a bad engine sound. It definitely feels reminiscent of something like a stock muscle car would. So I'll give it, you know, kind of a middle score for the sound. Um, the first thing I'm really feeling with this car is the weight. And I do typically drive really lightweight cars in the game. And in real life, I prefer more lightweight, uh, more nimble kind of cars. So this is definitely a change of pace for me. And it's impressive to me how much that translates through a video game and ultimately just an Xbox controller. The other thing that I'm feeling is uh, the brakes are very good, even though you can really feel the weight through the brakes. Um, they have good brakes, and I'm actually braking really early on a lot of my cornering, which I don't need to do. Um, the car is also very, very tail happy. Uh, this is probably, again, due to the weight, and I think it probably just has stock or maybe sport tires on. Um, but it really wants to slide the tail end out. The good thing, though, is it's very controllable. So I've got a few points to work on from the test drive here. Let's go into the mod window and see what we can do to the car. All right, so starting off with the tire compounds here, uh, it looks like we were starting with a sport compound, so we just have the upgrade to race, and always happy to see that there is also a drag compound as well. Not happy to see, though, that there's no wheel spacing options, again, on another car. Uh, that's a big bummer. Let's swap over to aero, though. And kind of another bummer, it looks like we're just gonna have the stock Forza front splitter, and I'm sure the stock Forza rear wing. So let's swap over to conversions and see if there's anything interesting we can do there. And it looks like you can do a turbo swap and a supercharger swap on the stock engine. That's pretty nice to see. I like the idea of doing a supercharger on the stock engine. As far as the drivetrain goes, I'm sure we'll have, yes, the standard option of switching to all-wheel drive. Uh, definitely going to keep this one rear-wheel drive, though. And uh, for engine swaps, looks like we've got a couple nice options. The 8.4 V10, 6.5 V12, as well as the racing V12. Um, I'm probably going to keep it stock, but might want to swap to one of these engines if I'm going to push into S2 class. But with that said, I'm going to take some time to play around with the tuning, and I'll come back with a tune in just a second. Alright, so we are back with an S1 class road tuned Camaro coming in at a modest yet respectable 841 horsepower. Now it's a heavy car weighing well over 3,500 pounds, but that power should be enough to make up for it. We'll see in the lap times though. I am using, as you can see, the default Forza Aero, uh, which I think looks actually pretty decent on this car, so definitely no complaints on the stock Forza Aero, at least for this vehicle. Now, as far as the tune goes, it responded pretty well to my basic tuning method, uh, which really helped to bring in that stock oversteer. I did, however, increase the suspension stiffness a little bit, as well as adjusting the damping to compensate for the heavier weight of the car. But let's dive right into the lap and see how it stacks up against the other S1 cars in its class. Alright, so this was a really interesting drive around my test track, because in the four laps that I drove, uh, my times changed drastically as soon as I figured out how to properly drive the car. My first lap, lap and a half, um, I was really struggling to still keep that rear end in check. It was definitely better than stock, uh, but especially around the hairpin corners, I just really could not uh, get a handle on keeping the tires from smoking. But as soon as I really buckled down and really had to do very active management for throttle control, 
this car became an absolute machine. This thing was so fast. Although the car really didn't feel that heavy when you were going straight because that power really compensated for it, you could really feel the weight in corners and when you were trying to make small adjustments. This was another car that was really hard to keep on the racing line and again took a lot of active management and kind of taking control, wrestling control rather, of the car. I'm not sure if my struggle with the car was just because I'm not used to driving cars like this in Forza or real life, um, but once I figured it out, it was very rewarding to drive and I'm really interested to see how it stacks up on the lap times. So let's hop right into it. How did the Chevy Camaro Z28 do compared to its competitors? Now we've had a few S1 cars already on the show, so there are some strong competitors against the Camaro. Um, but if you have any guesses for the lap time, you're probably wrong. The Camaro did the lap in 218.426, absolutely destroying everything else in S1 class, even the Noble M600. And I was really starting to get the feeling it might take first place on my last couple laps. This car is just so fast, and once you figure out how to drive it and how to manage it, um, it will reward you greatly. So let's move on to the Hokie score and see how it stacks up there. Alright, starting with looks, this car gets an easy 8. Uh, American muscle cars have really come into their own in the past few years as far as styling goes, and this is such a great example of it. It just looks so aggressive, so mean. Um, it flows really well. I just love it. Uh, as far as sound goes, I'm giving it a 5. It's kind of just one of those middle ground sounds. Doesn't sound great, doesn't sound terrible. Now for customization, we're looking at a 3. There just really wasn't much to customize about the car, but the few engine swaps and the turbo and supercharger swaps were nice to see. For the fun score, the Camaro gets a 7. It was pretty fun to drive around in the open world, easy to kick the rear end out controllably and kind of mess around with quite a bit of power. Now let's talk competitive scores, starting with drag, and I feel like the Camaro should get a pretty high score here because of its... Uh, kind of reputation as a stoplight drag racer in the real world, but in Forza it just can't compete against lighter weight all-wheel drive drag cars in the rest of the series, so I've got to give it a 4 here. It just doesn't stack up against other better drag cars. Now Rally, I'm giving it a 4 as well, and I'm kind of taking that as a good thing. This was actually a pretty decent Rally car. Um, definitely not the best, of course being rear wheel drive hurts a little bit over all wheel drive in most cases, but its competence off road definitely surprised me. Moving on to the race score, another easy 8. This was my fastest S1 car yet, and it would have gotten a higher score if it was easier to drive, but the struggle with driving it and very active driving you have to do bumps the score down a little bit. Now for the drift score, I'm giving the car a 7. It was actually a very good drift car, held angle very well, but the weight hurt it from getting a higher score. For the online score, the Camaro gets a 5. There's a lot of potential for a good rivals car here because it's so fast if you can control it, but online adventure is really going to be a struggle with this car being rear wheel drive and just hard to drive in general. Now moving to the right side of the screen with the flexibility score. And we're looking at a score of a 5.2, which I think is pretty good. There is not much customization to the car, but as far as the different racing disciplines, it really isn't bad at anything. It's okay with drag, surprisingly decent at rally, very good at racing, and also pretty dang good at drifting as well. Now, the style point score is a bit of a tough one for me. As a Japanese car fan that lives in the US and sees Camaros about a dozen times a day, so admittedly, my score might be a bit biased here, but I am giving it a 1. Now keep in mind, this is not out of 0 to 10, this is negative 5 to positive 5, so we're still above average, especially if I saw a Camaro roll up like the one we used in the review here, I would really appreciate it. And they are good looking cars, but I just don't think they have much style and cred to them over a lot of the other cars in the Horizon series. And this leads us to the total score. And we're looking at a Hokie score for the Chevy Camaro of 57.2, which is our highest Hokie score yet. The score can really be attributed to the fact that the car wasn't really bad at anything. If you're looking to pick up Horizon as a casual car fan and just want a fun open world car to mess around in and do most of the events in, this is a great choice. Now with that said, our review for the Chevy Camaro Z28 
is just about wrapped up. For the car review series, I'm working on getting a website up still so I can post all of the scores, retroactively update them, post my lap times, as well as post an explanation for the scoring system if people are interested in it, and I'll start hosting some other things on the site in due time. But guys, uh, I hope you liked the review on the Camaro. This was a really cool one for me because, like I said uh, multiple times throughout the video, uh, I'm not much of an American muscle guy, and this has definitely changed my mind. And one more thing, if you're watching this video soon after I posted it, you will hopefully know that Mitsubishi is back. I am so excited about this. Um, Toyota, it's your move next. I cannot wait um, to get into some of these Mitsubishis. I haven't even touched any of them yet. I'll probably be putting out a video in the next day or two about the update as a whole. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Enjoy those new Mitsubishis, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, everyone.